and we're recording. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Thursday, February 23rd meeting of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. And uh, since we are conducting this meeting remotely, I need to make first off sure that we everyone can see and be heard. We have a quorum of the committee here. And I will just call up people's names and just indicate however you want that all systems are go. Alex? Here. Pam? Here. Jennifer? Here. Bara? Here. Mandy? Present. And the only person we're missing, and I'll uh, make sure he can hear in her, is Irv Rhodes. Um, so Sean, I'm gonna turn it over to you. And I see that um, police, uh, multiple people have joined us, including Paul. So um, I don't know whether you want us to introduce ourselves um, in terms of where each of us come from, um, but we have a lot on today's agenda. So I'll, let, I'll allow you to guide us. All right, I think we can just get moving. Um, Jeremiah, um, I think everyone was here last year. So um, the only new member, um, Pam Rooney is from the council. So int quick introduction there. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Jeremiah. He's gonna guide us through uh, the facility, town facility projects. Um, when we get, we're gonna skip the energy sustainability for now because I've invited Stephanie Ciccarello to come. Um, so after we get through all the other facility projects, we'll come back to the energy sustainability project. And um, I imagine Stephanie will be here by that point. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to you, Jeremiah, just to start going through. Um, you know what you submitted, Jeremiah. If you want me to kind of queue you up on what project is next, let me know. Um, but the first one is the interior, interior, exterior maintenance and ADA improvements for $200,000. Uh, Sean, just one quick item of business. I have to ask of the committee for someone to volunteer to take minutes. Yep. Um, and there will be a Zoom recording of this. So if I can get, get a minute taker retroactively as need be, but um, Alex, I just- can, I minute. can take minutes. Okay, thank you, Mandy. As, as she raises her hand in a cast. <laughs> uh, Sean, is, is there a way that I can uh, share my screen? I, I put together a slideshow. I do it every year. So it just helps me um, yeah, with go, my thoughts. You can go ahead. Uh, you should be able to um, share it now. Is it um, giving you any issues? No, just okay. Good, thank you. All right, so here is my little slideshow. Um, so, sh unfortunately, Sean, these these are not in order. I just kind of put put them in there, so it won't be in the order that you have. But we will get through all of them. Okay, so the the first one I have here is the uh, uh, central station kitchen renovation for um, the Amherst Fire Department. Uh, the request is for thirty thousand um, dollars. In the image, you can see uh, part of their kitchen. Uh, it, it is a, a well worn um, uh, kitchen uh, that helps uh, support our first responders. Uh, Central Fire does have most of our career uh, uh, first responders there. Uh, so what it is being used uh, 24 hours. Uh, I did look at uh, the kitchen itself to see if we could uh, just kind of spruce it up and fix it up. But we do have um, uh, issues with uh, drawers falling apart, uh, countertops delaminating. So, so the intent would be to uh, fully replace the cabinetry and the countertops uh, to, to provide a, a, a more functional design and in, in, uh, kitchen for uh, the firefighters. Here's some additional photos. You can see the, just all of it is, is sort of spread out. So I think that I, I could do a better job of kind of getting it together and um, uh, helping them because uh, storage is a premium as well. Okay, um, the next item is uh, the town hall uh, HVAC upgrades. 
Um, so the initial, the original request, there was an original request in there and, and I'm asking for some additional money. And the reason for that additional money is, is to not, not replace the, the furnaces, the natural gas fired furnaces with just high efficiency, um, fossil fuel burning equipment. Uh, the, the intent would be to eliminate, uh, the equip that natural uh, gas fired equipment and replace it with electrified units and and to do that um, would would require some additional funding. Um, the the equipment has uh, most certainly um, reached its end of life. It has given us everything and really owes us nothing. Uh, we've had a number of issues. Uh, Nothing catastrophic with the equipment, but but I really need to uh, uh, get them replaced before it becomes uh, a bigger disaster. Uh, okay. And I, I will say, I know uh, Stephanie was is going to join. Uh, one of the pieces um, I'll just sort of speak on her behalf is is unless she's in a room, I don't know. <laughs> No, no. Um, we are working with. She's, she's coming over, Jeremiah. I've just brought her in. Okay, I'll just put her in a hot seat right away then. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I was I was joined as um, just an attendee. But in any case, yeah, um, Jeremiah and I have actually been talking about the goals for the climate action plan, and one of the main goals is to electrify. Um, municipal buildings and get them off fossil fuels. So um, town hall would be a really, really great first project to begin with for so many reasons. I mean, on top of the fact that, you know, the system is at the end of its life, it's also, um, you know, a very symbolic building in which to start off with moving off fossil fuels. Um, so it feels like a really exciting opportunity. So we have had some collaboration and this was again, like one of the things that we identified as a, as a priority. Yeah, I, I think it's important to, to show both uh, our, the, the town employees and in the community that even in a, a building that was built, you know, over a hundred years ago, we can still uh, push these climate action um, goals and, and, um, eliminate the fossil fuels. So it doesn't have to be a brand new building as you're building it with the latest and greatest. We can we can make these changes to our old buildings. So I will. Um, uh, so I see Alex's hand is up. Sean, do you want us to ask questions as he goes through or do you want a wait to the end? Um, I think it would be best to go project by project and to see if there's any questions. So Jeremiah, I guess if you, at, when you're done with a a particular project, if you just want to see if there's questions on that project, that would be the best sure. way. Yeah. Okay. Alex. Thanks. So um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, so the original cost was 140000 and this is 228 Is that yes. how I have the right numbers? Okay. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, um, that's because you're converting the system. Can you talk a little bit about what that means and i obviously am speaking from a place of <laughs> what does it mean to convert a system from uh, <laughs> natural gas equipment that it's increasing your cost so just understanding that yeah so so that uh the the, the original funding that was put in uh was put in um submitted to the ca uh, joint capital committee uh, some time ago mm -hmm. and i think when that money was put in there the the thought was to uh just replace it with high efficiency um, natural gas fired furnaces. Uh, that that would be my guess. I didn't get to see any of that older paperwork, but that would be my guess just based on the cost, uh, because that amount really does sort of align itself with with putting in um, the gas fired furnaces. Um, so what what I intend to look at and would like to do is, is well, you would take that equipment out and we would look at some equipment that might be able to uh, replace it. So we, we've we heard of um, our mini splits and um, uh, air source heat, heat pumps. Well, they have water source heat pumps as well. So 
and it would it would be like those mini splits that you have. Um, we're still uh, pulling heat, extracting heat from the outside air, and heating up that loop water. So in, instead of you know there being a, a, a flame that's that's heating up this this coil that uh, and and that's providing uh, the water heat to the building, we're just doing it through electricity. We're just we're doing it through a condenser. Um, so I don't know exactly what the equipment might look like, um, as of yet, that would have to be, um, uh, engineered and designed to ensure that we can adequately heat the building, uh, with that type of equipment. Um, but, but that would be the intent to, to just el eliminate that equipment and put in something like a air source heat pump or a heat pump chiller something like that in its place um, to provide the heat th throughout the season, the heating season. Could, could I follow up, Kathy? Yeah. Okay, so again, Jeremiah, you know that I'm in no way an HVAC person and being dragged into this information, trying to understand these things because of the library, but um, my understanding, so I guess my question is, is the 228 for the, the estimate for the design and the replacement. Like I know some of the challenges we're dealing with at the library is, um, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't use, uh, you can't heat to the same temperature needed, I guess, using the electric that you can off the natural gas, I think. And so we in New England can't get our building warm enough is my understanding, um, but also because we have an old building as is town hall, like we've done everything we can to seal the building, but. I live in a converted barn and I can tell you my heat pumps don't work once it's below 30 because it's just not tightly sealed enough. So I guess, is is this sort of like an intro number and we could probably expect once you figure it out that you're gonna come back and do more or like, what does this number really mean? And should we expect it more for next year or whenever? It, it, it would be a design build project. So s s when we go out, to bid for this, uh, there would be, uh, a, as part of it, um, the contractor would be sort of designing designing the, the, the system and uh, doing the install. Um, yes, there is some challenges with uh, heat pump systems. Uh, typically they can only heat water up to 140 degrees, um, but, but you, what needs to happen prior to a project like this is you, you need to figure out how hot does the water need to be? So everyone just with commercial systems put, uh, installs them and says we we're gonna we're gonna just push 100 180 degrees. That's what we're gonna push 180 degrees. You may never need 180 degrees, but you also need to figure out how, how what's the lowest possible temperature that water can be in order to have a comfortable space. And that's because ultimately that's what you're trying to do is provide a comfortable space for the staff and for the community. If you can achieve that 100 at 140 degree loop temperature, well then you've done it. It's an easy it's an easy solution. If you've figured out that you need 160 degrees, well then how do we how do we account for that 20 degree differential? So what you could do is put buffer tanks in that have electric heat. So just a big hot water, basically a big hot water tank um, that's that's uh, heats up the water um, through an electric uh, coil. So that that's how we we sort of get the temperatures that we need. But but there is um, it, it does take some work. And this winter, I have been slowly dropping my loop temperature from that generic 180 degrees that everyone sets them at to see to to see about what temperature I, I I can get away with so as soon as I get the complaints that come in and say I'm just not feeling that warm then I know that I, I've I've probably reached my lowest point so it's part of a big process <laughs> Mandy why don't you go before me I mean I'm uh you may ask the same question I'm going to ask. So, oh, mine mine's a fairly basic question. I noticed on the um, the sheet you filled out the I, I don't know what we're calling these sheets, but but the the information sheet that you indicated that this wouldn't have 
necessarily an impact on the operating budget. Uh, do you expect a new system to cost the same or more to run than the natural gas system we currently have? If anything, it may cost a little bit more. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's, uh, um, and and I would have to I would have to do the calculations on that and and to to provide some more accurate information. Um, uh, but uh, really, we're we're just swapping out. We'll call it fuel sources. So we're get we're eliminating natural gas, um, but we're increasing our electric costs. Um, so what what that looks like, I I don't I don't really know, and that's that's why I just put that because I could I couldn't tell you I couldn't tell you I just think it's you know we're eliminating the fossil fuel which is huge. <laughs> so my question I I think is simple. You said we'd we'd allocated 140. Is this 288 in addition? So is the total cost 268, or do we subtract? The earlier 140 and is the incremental cost whatever um it, it would be the incremental cost okay so, so in terms yeah. of our, in terms of sean's sheet where he shouldn't be subtracting 228 it, something it, else jeremiah be, cl clarify for him um so we have 140,000. My understanding was the difference between the 140,000 and the 228 was going to be a, a green communities grant Is that right? Um, we we are still working on the green communities grants. So the the two twenty eight, I I think that I will I I increase the amount because I think that we're going to need in in order to to go, um, fully eliminate the the um, natural gas that it's it's going to cost more than the one forty five, and it may cost more than this two twenty eight. My thought is is this is what this is what I suspect I would need. Um, and if we could get additional money from green communities, then that could help us offset uh, offset the costs. Okay, we'll have to coordinate because um, so, the so earlier conversations where the difference between the two twenty eight and the one forty was um, was the green communities grant, but we okay. can we can update yes. that. So, so Sean, if you could update it, because it also since we're over budget for the current year, it matters whether this is two twenty eight, one forty eight, or something less. Um, um, and then my follow-up question, and I'll, it's generic, and I don't expect an answer, Jeremiah and Stephanie, but there is a new uh, provision because of the change in the federal tax code that allows um, public, non otherwise non-taxable entities to get a direct payment in lieu of a credit, and it includes things like air source heat pumps. So... You know, I don't expect that you would account for that right now, but it's up to 30% of the cost. So it's it's not an insignificant. And then what is the cost they calculate? But it's on the books in the federal code. So as yet, no one's applied for it because it went on the books in January 2023. Um, but just, Sean, if you could, because again, it matters for this balancing act you're trying to do. That's my question. Question and a comment. Yeah, I'll coordinate with um, uh, Jeremiah and, and verify what number is the correct one, and then we'll update the deficit. So before you guys do your deliberation. So Pam. Thanks. Um, so given this this uh, dependence on electricity for not just the, the lights in the building now, the heat, do is there a backup generator at, at Town Hall? Yes, there is. And it and it's and it's sufficient to cover the the heat pumps that will be pushing the hot water through the building, right? It it would it would have to be uh, looked at, and they were there would have to be some calculations to ensure that it it can support that. I think that ends the questions for this, Sean. We can, Jeremy. So, you can, uh, you so, can. so Kathy, I might propose a slight adjustment, which is maybe we go through all the projects and then open up for questions. I just want to make sure we, okay. um, we can, not, these are good questions. I just want to make sure we do get done by two o'clock or so, so we can um, get to the other departments as well. So do you want to go ahead to the next, um, go through the rest of your sure. projects, Jeremiah? Sure. 
Okay, so the next is the Amherst Police Department server room and telecom room uh, HVAC replacement. Uh, so, so both of those spaces have uh, uh, air source uh, cooling systems. So they're cooling only uh, because we don't need to ever really provide heat in those spaces. Um, those house all of our, our telecom equipment for um, fire and, and um, uh, the police, as well as our main servers for the town. Um, in this image, you can see the condensers um, one of the issues is the fact that they're all indoors. Um, with them being indoors, their efficiency has uh, dramatically been reduced. Um, in the summer months, this room gets incredibly hot. And some of that, that heat is because of this, this equipment. But in, to ensure that the equipment runs appropriately, they really do need to be moved outside. Beyond that, um, we have experienced a number of failures to the systems. Um, these are old systems still running on uh, a pretty um, um, uh, toxic um, refrigerant that has been phased out. So uh, by uh, eliminating this equipment, we would have much more efficient equipment. We'd also be eliminating uh, the use of the R22 refrigerant, um, and we would ensure that both of these these rooms or three of these rooms are being uh, cooled appropriately so we won't have any large system failures. Okay, here's just some other pictures. You can Jeremiah, see my... on this one, um, just some additional information. I, I, this is the one that I mentioned last time. We may be doing some of this now yeah. because of um, because of the urgency with which it needs to be done. And we're looking at uh, the existing town uh, townwide capital money that we have. So this is one that might actually be reduced um, yes. when you come back for your deliberation. And I think it might be you know roughly half of this when we come back. Um, so just as a heads up. Yep. Some more images. And here we are with uh, all buildings, interior and exterior improvements. So the request is for $200,000. So it's general ongoing repairs needed for all the in town, town buildings, just to ensure that the facilities are you know, adequately maintained. Uh, we can uh, improve a lot of our different spaces. Uh, and, and also with this money, I'm uh, using it uh, to again, kind of push forward some of our uh, sustainability goals. Now it's it sort of, it, 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 we do have the sustainability money for specific projects, but when we look at say something like um, the town hall boilers, you know, when, when we're trying to find the best equipment available or the most energy efficient, this, this obviously helps. Um, so some of the different things is just, uh, the wall, ceiling, flooring, um, HVAC, electrical, plumbing. Um, uh, so uh, throughout, I, I, I go through uh, the buildings and see where we can. So the, the image here is uh, a, a very small ba bathroom over at Central Fire. Um, it is. Uh, it definitely needs some updating. It also needs to grow in, in size, but uh, unfortunately, I can't do that. Uh, um, some more air issues you could see uh, with so, some brickwork. Um, the other image has some brickwork as well, some glazing issues, um, lighting, uh, improving the lighting in some of the buildings. Uh, so doing an LED um, retrofit or replacements. Um, been using this for uh, exterior envelope repairs and replacements had to replace some doors on buildings, um, hardware, uh, uh, security, um, adding some um, levels of security. Uh, so th that's generally what, what this money has been used for. And, and I will say out of all of uh, the capital requests, this one is so helpful. It, it really does help uh, uh, me able to, to make some, um, big improvements 
um, at at Amherst uh, Police Department right now. We're looking at re- um, updating the report room. Well, in that process, I I was looking at well, the flooring could use getting done, and this could use getting done. And if I'm working in this one room, what about growing the project a little bit more and taking care of some of these other spaces that are desperately in need of of renovations and that's where this money has come um in use and and taking these smaller projects and just kind of growing into something much greater okay so the next project is the town hall reception windows so at town hall we have four service counters um, and at the beginning of uh, the onset of the pandemic, um, there was a request to, to put, put up some uh, polycarbonate sheets, some plexiglass to help create some separation, some safety um, between, uh, you know, the community and, and our town staff. And I, I'll have to say that the staff really did appreciate uh, having those, those windows uh, up. Uh, so really what I'd like to do is, is um, take those uh, semi-permanent ones down and put in something that is more permanent. So it would look like a more traditional um, service counter, uh, potentially a, like aluminum frame safety glass uh, that's in there. So just just trying to take away some of these, these items and, and put in something that's much more lasting. And real quick, um, this project isn't shown separately on the plan anywhere because when we're making, when we're reviewing everything, uh, we determined this would come out of the two hundred thousand uh, for sort of general repairs. So um, you won't see this as a separate item on the the list of projects, but it, it was submitted as a request. Okay. Uh, Munson Library fire alarm system. This this image does not represent the Munson Library. I just found a fun image. Because we don't have a, a fire alarm system at, at Munson. So Munson is, is a multi-use facility uh, that houses the library meeting rooms in our, our large community hall. Um, and the request is to, for funding to get a fire and alarm system installed uh, just to make uh, the, the building much more uh, safe for the occupants. Um, initially, this was looked at several years ago, and the costs were relatively low. Uh, this was pre-pandemic, um, uh, but during the pandemic, uh, I, I went out to bid on, on this project and found out that the cost of, of this has increased dramatically. Uh, so with this money, I would be able to put in a, a fire alarm system and uh, have that emergency notification. Okay, Amherst Child Care parking lot. Uh, so this is just an, it's, a, it's age. So the par- parking lot at the Amherst Child Care Center is starting to deteriorate. There's a lot of cracking. Um, we're ha- experiencing potholes and trying to repair those. Um, so, uh, the request here is for 50000 to make some of these repairs and repave uh, areas of the parking lot to make them safe um, for uh, the community that's occupying the building and uh, uh, the, the staff. So um, basic uh, APD's roof. This is the $300,000 capital project. Uh, The shingles uh, on the uh, police department uh, are are essentially at end of life. Um, It was a basic uh, asphalt shingle that was applied to the building. Um, We are experiencing some some areas that have some leaking. Um, And and really what the the intent is, is to get that that roof re-shingled. Um, and, and while doing that, I think it's important we, that we've had this uh, sort of standing um, uh, sort of interest to see if there's a potential for solar uh, for that building. Um, so if we, we get the roof, we're, we're sort of taking care of two things. One, 
we're maintaining the building, we're ensuring that no interior is is damaged from any of this leaking. Um, it's it's just good for uh, uh, that asset, but it also uh, creates a sort of clean slate. So if we do find that there is, it is a good site for solar, well, we have a clean roof um, that, that can accept it. Um, Bangs Community Center remodeling. Um, I'm not sure if any of you or all of you got to to go up to the upper level of, of the Banks Community Center and saw our new uh, Crest Department. Um, but uh, it, we, we were able to uh, renovate most of the, the upper floor of the Banks Community Center, uh, update the, the flooring. Uh, we did some demolition to the walls, uh, created some, some new um, work, work areas and office spaces for the Crest Department. So the request would be for $50,000 to continue that, that work for the area that was left untouched. And I have it on our blueprint here and um, it's within that bright, bright red rectangle. So there's not a lot of space. What I'd like to see is, is open that all the way up. So de demo a lot of those walls, get them out of there, redo the ceiling, grid, um, installed uh, energy efficient you know, LED lighting uh, and, in, and have one big space that we can use. It could be used for a meeting, a meeting space, uh, conference area, or if we find a need for uh, office space in the future, it could always be sort of dissected into something different. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to, to uh, oh, and I saw that I, did not update the bottom part. So there's, <laughs> unfortunately. So yes, that's that's the, the Banks Community Center remodeling. And then the last slide is Stephanie's slide, really. It's uh, energy sustainability project improvements for 200,000. Sean, I'm not sure if you want me to answer questions regarding my requests before. Um, Stephanie. Stephanie, why don't you do this one and then we'll open up for all facility related questions. Sure, thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, so this funding is um, really kind of broadly for um, for the town capital projects. So it's not just the facilities, really. It's also um, addressing the need for um, some gap funding. For instance, when we're trying to purchase, as we did with the ambulance. Um, a vehicle purchase that could be made more sustainable by adding anti-idling technology. So this funding helps bridge those gaps um, for when we have those requests. Um, also for some building projects as well. Um, you know, Jeremiah, Jeremiah and I have talked about some of the projects, even some of the building projects, if there's an opportunity to, to um, cover a gap in funding for, again, moving towards an efficiency, we could use some of this funding to support that as well. So um, some of this, um, you know, some of this funding is also being used uh, for um, community gardens and conservation. We're developing a few community gardens within the community where we have residents that are getting more actively engaged and involved, for instance, the Fort River Farm Community Garden. So th these projects are pretty broad. It's not just about facilities, um, but it does cover really to help some of those um, those gaps in funding that can really help us move towards more greater efficiencies. Stephanie, is it okay if I share your FY23 sure. budget? Um, I think that we got a question on that and I know you did a nice job um, itemizing it. So let me... Do you need me to stop sharing? Yeah, do you want to stop sharing for a second, Chairman? Yeah. Um, so this was the budget that um, Stephanie put together for the FY23 fund. So we talked about um, how it's supporting some of our vehicle purchases um, to, to include hybrid technology. The hope is that going forward, generally the vehicle requests will already include this technology. So Stephanie won't have to use these funds to supplement them. Um, that'll just sort of be built in as sort of the norm going forward, but um, that wasn't the case uh, this past year. So we've got three vehicle, uh, different types of vehicles. Um, some, Stephanie, you probably can explain these three. I remember you walked me through what these were over at the wastewater treatment facility. Right. Yep. 
So the um, so the uh, DPW staff had reached out about these projects um, that would sort of um, again introduce um, mechanical systems that would be more efficient, fuel efficient, and um, and or replace uh, the block the block heater and the heat pump would replace fossil fuel systems. Um, but they were technologies that you know they didn't actually have the funding for, so they were requesting some support. Uh, for those, so I felt they certainly fun, fell under this category. The utility tricycles, I have to tell you, are probably my most favorite in all of the requests that are here, because there are staff at the wastewater treatment plant, plant who felt that um, they use pickup trucks to drive around the facility to be lugging equipment back and forth, and um, two employees felt that you know they could use these utility tricycles that have baskets and carts so that they could actually you know ride around the the um you know the facility and sort of be able to accommodate you know the needs without having to get into a truck and use gasoline to drive around the, the complex so um i thought this was fantastic because not only am i the sustainability coordinator but i'm also on the town's wellness team and so this just sort of hits a couple of categories where we've got people who want to actually you know riding bicycles around the or tricycles around um to sort of do their job was just a great win-win so um i was more than happy to put this in for our request um and then town hall insulation speaks for itself um you know again if we're going to be moving into um installing heat pump technology, then we certainly want to be able to better insulate the building for a better performance of that equipment. And then uh, similarly, months and library insulation is the same, uh, same reasons we want to put in heat pump technology in those um, facilities as well, but we need to make sure that they're well insulated before you add that technology in. And then community gardens, as I mentioned earlier, um, this uh, funding would specifically be for the Fort River Community Garden, where um, we need to put in a backup water system. We did put in a hand pump well, but we need a cistern to really act as an additional um, source of water for the gardening season. We were we just barely squeaked by last summer um, towards the end of the season. We had a drought period and the water was running pretty low. They still had water, but it was very low, but we were lucky that it didn't just stop. So the cistern would be a backup system. Um, gardeners did have some problems with deer getting in. So we need some deer fencing. Um, and then, you know, we need just sort of the infrastructure to support the cistern like a base. And so there's just costs that come up and, um, they do add up pretty quickly. So that was what that funding is all for. So uh, I think now it's good to open up for questions on any of the facility projects. Mandy. Yeah, um, I just had a question on the reception window upgrades. Um, when I heard security, I thought I, it, it was a different type of security than you were describing. And so I, I have some more questions on that. Is it more COVID related security or is it security um, concerns from visitors to town hall that is is sort of pushing this upgrade? And then um, I guess one of my questions is, will this make town hall feel less welcoming? And if so, are there other ways to create and do that security that doesn't necessarily, you know, cause that potential unwelcoming feeling. Yeah, that's that's good, and that that is something that I've I've considered uh, uh, quite a bit, um, even before the pandemic. There was a a a, a committee, a group of individuals uh, that. Uh, got together and, and were discussing uh, the sort of the safety of of town hall because uh, prior to putting up the the polycarbonate sheets, you had these very large openings, uh, and uh, staff uh, sort of expressed their their concerns that well any maybe irate individual can just very easily hop right over the counter and then be 
within their their space where the the rest of the staff is. Um, having the polycarbonate sheets is was more so for COVID. Um, and, and that's that's to help with reopening the building. And now what, what the request is, is to, tr to try to find uh, a, somewhere in between. So sort of honoring that, that safety uh, concerns that the staff brought up and also having these uh, sort of health, the, the health risks uh, also being taken care of. I, I do know what you're saying. Um, I, my, my concern would be, you know, what, what does it feel like when you walk into to the building? And does it feel like we're, we're, we're defensive rather than welcoming? Um, and and I, think, I think we can, it, it, it'd be sort of careful consideration with the design and the, the overall look. If, if it feels um, uh, institutional, and then I think that's going to be the uh, sort of the feeling that that is portrayed to the to community. So I, I it, it'll just have to be um, carefully considered, I, I, I think. But I, I think that there's a meaningful way to do it and, and uh, sort of check all the boxes. Thank you. Would you go next? Yeah. OK. Um, Two, two general questions, and it applies to just about everything that we're going to be talking about with JCPC, I think. Um, do we have a, a total deferred maintenance amount that, that our facilities um, have racked up or that are in, in need? And then secondly, in terms of being able to implement these projects, it, it occurs to me that our decision and our passing a budget comes at a time which is really late. I mean, since the budget starts on July 1, we should have already had bids in hand. The you know best bids are, are uh, attained during usually winter months for any kind of outside construction. Does the timing of our, of our process here um, actually support getting good bids and, and the timing of them? I can answer the second one, Jeremiah, if you want, just because it applies to everything. Um, I think it doesn't, but that's usually why you won't see projects completed the first year that they're here. It usually takes that two to three year time frame to complete projects. Um, so a lot of times when the funding becomes available, um, you'll see the bidding happen that fall or that winter, and then the project will be done the following year. Um, so that's that report we give you where we look at three years and older. That's why we kind of we look at that three years and older because um, we know it could take two to three years just if we move at a normal pace to get the project done. Yeah, and there, there I do have uh, some the starts of projects just kind of waiting, waiting. So all all of the document is I may have completed all of my documentation, but maybe haven't yet sent it down to to Sean and in procurement yet. Uh, just sort of waiting for that because it it also takes our our time. Um, so even even though um, we're we're asking these other contractors, if if we uh, start uh, put taking too many projects on all at once, we get spread pretty thin. So I try to um, uh, get get the projects going and space them out throughout the year. What, what can we do in, uh, for the inside and outside and, and hopefully get as much done as possible um, each year. And, and your first question, Pam, about deferred maintenance and a total. Um, yes, we have deferred maintenance. Uh, we've tried to do a better job at chipping away at it with that sort of general facility pot of money. Um, so we're not having to wait to do something, especially smaller projects. So I think Jeremiah has done a good job catching up and the schools have a similar uh, pot of money. Um, schools have done a good job catching up on sort of the smaller items, but you'll see, if you just look at the five-year capital plan, you'll see some big projects on there that probably could fall under that, um, you know, that term of deferred maintenance. So it's a big number. We don't have a single, a single uh, amount, but um, I do think we're starting to chip away at some of it just by putting more money into general maintenance and repairs. I'm wondering, 
Alex, are, are you asking on the same topics um, or can I do a follow-up on what Pam just asked? All right, no, go ahead, ask your follow-up. Okay, so, um, so just following on what Pam asked, I thought what you presented, Stephanie, was fabulous on saying, how did you use last year's 200,000? And it would be useful, not now, but a similar question, we this is the innovation we put together this pool for you jeremy and last year you told us the kinds of things you would do i think it would just be useful to get you know the bucket list of what actually happened because that to me is we're we're doing a checklist so that's just a comment on it okay. um and then my one somewhat unrelated question and then i'll go to alec i agree with mandy by the way i i had the same question on the windows i i just if you look at post office, they don't have any barriers. If you look at a lot of place, banks don't. I, I think getting down to a, just a transom, um, if you've ever tried to talk to anyone in the New York subway system, you'll discover they can't hear you and you can't hear them. Um, you know, so not only is it a barrier, it's it's a sound barrier. So just thinking yeah. about But I had a question on the child care centers pavement. So you don't need to answer it now, but to me, it was slightly lower priority because our roads look and a lot of places that look worse than that. That was question number one and why it's not in the DPW budget as opposed to uh, the town facility budget. Um, so that was just a, a general, it's not a lot of money, but we're over budget this year. So I've been looking for where, which things are less urgent. Um, and especially since that one said you do part of it, but not all of it. So you do the driveway, but not the turnaround. Um, so just trying to think of that since it's not the Wildwood parking lot either, you know? Um, so that was my comment on that. Alex. Uh, thanks. Yeah, actually, that's partially what I was gonna ask about is, um, is there a plan to complete the circle drive on the childcare parking lot? And does that impact, you know, funding timing, does it matter if it's done separately? And then I also had sort of the same sort of question that is it correct to assume that if a parking lot or sidewalk is part of a building then it's under the facilities budget for that building as opposed to like a DPW, I assume like, you know, town parking lots may be your DPW budget, but like parking lot associated with a building is part of that budget. So just understanding that. And then I had a couple more questions, so I don't know if you want me to ask all of them or pause. Why don't we start with that one? So Jeremiah, do you want to speak to a little bit why the child care request came through you? Um, and if I don't know if you know anything about the, the roundabout, but if you do. Yeah, so I work closely with uh, the the maintenance team that that takes care of both uh, that building and our, our North Amherst uh, um, school so essentially they have their own sort of maintenance team that for all the day-to-day -day, uh, issues um, they take care of any of the bigger uh, building and infrastructure stuff um, that's the town's responsibility uh, so when me when meeting with with them you know we've identified that there are issues with the parking area um, we're we're getting some potholes that are in the center uh, and and that sort of affects you know the vehicles coming and going also in any of the individuals that are walking through that space uh, so that's kind of how we we sort of come up with that if we could recoat and seal we we certainly go that route or not we have done that in at other facilities but i think that this air this this parking lot has has sort of gone past that point we we can't just seal it uh, and and get some more time out of it. The circle area is not seeing the same sort of uh, damage that the parking area is. Uh, so the parking we have a lot of that crackling that's happening, uh, and that's where and we also have the pot the potholes. Um, right now, I would say that the circle's in good shape. I mean, would I love to do the circle as well? Absolutely. And then if I did that, then I'd go, well, I need to do some stuff for the parking lot lights. So while I'm digging there, I'll trench for that. And, you know, and that's how these smaller things just explode into some uh, much bigger projects. Uh, but 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 I, I think to the to the question you asked is that area is in good shape right now. I think I would say that we we leave it alone. We can easily uh, take care of the parking area 
and, and leave the circle. Uh, and you would just have that one joint, uh, which could be sealed uh, and, and, and get some more time out of it. Um, yes, it would be nice to do everything, but at the same time is, is it costs a lot. So, so just sort of addressing the, the, the need rather than the want. On and, and just building off Jeremiah, I think the process is generally the facility folks will bring the parking lot issues up, not DPW. Um, although if approved, we will work with the DPW to do the, the uh, repaving of the parking lot. We'll work with them and their contractors um, to do that work. But just from experience at the high school and middle school, you know, often it's the facility folks I hear about the the issues with the parking lot when staff are walking in or whoever's walking in, that's who hears it. So they're generally the ones that raise the issue. Um, and then again, we partner with DPW to actually fix it. But it stays under their budget, not. Yeah, in terms of, I think the way we've structured is it lives whatever facility, whatever facility the parking lot is at, yeah. And I guess in conjunction with Pam's question, so the, the asset management sheet that we have that has maintenance costs, mm -hmm. are those just building or are we also contemplating these costs as well, the sidewalks and the repaving of, like, is that something that needs to be added or is that already contemplated? Yeah, I mean, if, if we, so right now what's on the asset maintenance sheet are budgets and actual expenses. Um, it does not include uh, sort of deferred maintenance or, um, or p potential projects that are needed. Um, it's something we could think about, although it would that would be a significant undertaking, I think, to really inventory all that in a way that's helpful um, as opposed to just breathtaking, you know? <laughs> so um, so we, we, I'm sure Jeremiah has a, his own sorts of lists by building of the, the things that need improvements, but we, that's something we could look at for the future, but it, it would be a big um, addition. And then just my other question before Farah, sorry Farah, is um, on the APD roof design, um, I, I believe Stephanie that the town has a sustainability statement for procurement, but I don't know if that's just for HVAC systems. Are we also looking at like roofing materials or things? I mean, I don't know the, the level to which we're trying to become green or whether we're just focusing on sort of HVAC systems right now. And The um, statement that was drawn up um, was really just sort of fo focused on HVAC systems for now. Um, and, you know, but I think, you know, in general, when we do procurement, I think we're, you know, we're looking to um, do anything that's going to help us sort of tick off meeting our, our goals. So, you know, it's always, I, I think it's always kind of taken into consideration. Yeah, and that that is something that I've, I've, uh... Uh, talk to Stephanie about because that that's when I just go knock on her cubicle and go so I'm doing this project and I'm thinking about the flooring that we're going to use and should I go this dire direction with it and I, she's always happy to hear that I'm you know that's it's it's part of the the process and you, you know and I, and even even though that that our statement is HVAC related I do think about those other things. We have flooring projects coming up. Well, I want to use a flooring that doesn't require uh, waxes and strippers and all of these things. Let's get rid of that so we're not using all these gross chemicals in the building, and and we can we can still have it look great. And so so it is it is a thought while while I'm doing these projects. <laughs> Kathy is muted, but I think she said Farah. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Jeremiah and Stephanie. It's really helpful to hear, I mean, um, listen to your presentation, and it just feels like everything should be a priority. I'm just curious about the, um, not to harp on on libraries, but I'm kind of curious about the Munson fire alarm system. It seems like that should have been a priority when you said that it was something that came up a few years ago and with families and kids going through there. I'm just curious about the process behind that. Yeah, I agree. Um, from from my understanding and what I've what I've heard is is um, you know the I think the ask has been put out there uh, a number of years ago, and I, and like I said, I know that it was looked at. Um, uh, boy, I wish it was done <laughs> when they initially got got some quotes in uh, because uh, the costs were it was a fraction of of what I'm seeing now. 
Uh, so we would have been able to at least have that layer of, of safety within the building. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, I, I, unfortunately, with the pandemic, we did run into some challenges of uh, most of the manufacturers um, weren't actually making equipment. So um, there was a, a, a big delay on equipment equipment uh, manufacturing as far as like the fire alarm systems uh, for the control panel. Um, they, had, they, they had devices. And then the wiring itself was a, what became an, an issue. And that, those, those are the items that, that sort of drove up the costs. And it, the timing wasn't good, even though I, it, it is a life safety issue and it needs to happen right away. Um, the, when I looked at it and started trying to get quotes in, it, it became an, it became a timing issue. It was not being able to get, get equipment, not getting responses from vendors. Um, so when I put the, put together my RFP, we went out three times and eventually I just started calling people and said, Hey, did you get that? what, what's, what's off putting about this? You know, what's, what's the problem? What's the challenge? And, and I got some great feedback and some of it was, we just don't have anything. There's our shelves are empty, you know, and, and say a company like Johnson controls, it's one of the largest companies in the world. They're saying they're just starting to manufacture stuff. So we did run into some of those issues, uh, but it, but it most certainly is is a priority as, as far as I'm concerned, and it, and it will get done as quickly as I, I can. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm not seeing any other hands up, Sean. So I think, um, you know, Jeremy, the, the chart set's fantastic. So if you could give it to Sean so we could post yes. it, it would be great. Absolutely. All right, um, any final questions for Stephanie or Jeremiah? All right, then I think, uh, thank you both for joining. And I, we have a few questions that I'll follow up with you all on after. Um, but next is the police department. And I think we have uh, Scott and Gabe here to talk about their projects. Um, Scott, do you have your the list of your projects in front of you or do you want me to um, put it up on the screen. Uh, whatever you want, Sean. I've got the three projects that. Yeah, it's the console upgrade, the body cameras, and the cruisers. That's right. Okay. Why don't you go ahead? So two two of them are going to be relatively easy to scooch through because uh, the reality is we're probably not ready for the actual procurement and funding for these two projects. And the ones I'm talking about are the. Um, <clears throat> the body warrant cameras proposal because uh, I wanted to get it out there and have the discussion started. Um, just so you know, this is a this is a um, proposal that the police officers want and have wanted for a while. When it comes specific to the uh, body worn camera program, and it's expensive. It includes upgrades to our in car video system as well, but. Why I'm saying that we're going to have to delay this is it's going to fall under the purview of the um, facial recognition bylaw. So we're going to need to have the total support of the, once we establish the bylaw and, and read through that and understand what it, how it affects our, our um, purchases in the future, um, we're going to need to have the support of the town council in order to move forward with that project. So I wanted to get it on there uh, for this year's discussion, um, mostly for the town council, not necessarily for the, for the for this group, but to have that discussion down the road about, first of all, does the town council support this? Um, it's something that's important to the police officers themselves. And um, if so, then I think we're probably looking at um, something in FY25 or even 26, but it's something that we need to start having a serious conversation about. Um, and I'll go through these as well, Sean, and you can have 
Uh, if there's questions at the end, we can do that, uh, uh, similar to what we do with Jeremiah. For the request for the APTAC dispatch console project, it's another big ticket item. Um, the company that we currently have, TriTech Solutions, which is the IMC um, system that handles all of our data collection, all of our report writing, all of our dispatch console equipment is going out of business. Um, and they've notified us that they'll be out of business in the New England region in probably the next three years. Um, originally, we were going to request this, this purchase for this fiscal year. About 90% 90 of, 90 of the police departments in New England all use this same company. So what we've decided to do, uh, I sit on a couple of boards in the Mass Chiefs, and we're going to look at this from a totality purchase uh, through the Mass Chiefs, through the New England Chiefs of Police, because so many police agencies use the same systems. We're going to be contracting with or requesting contracting through major suppliers to see if we can get a better price if 600 police departments were looking to make these purchases or even 200 police departments. We just think we're going to get better quotes down the road if we look at this um, from a regional aspect and regional approach. So this is another large ticket, ticket item, large cost item that will probably be coming up in probably FY25 or 26. And then the final request is just our annual request for uh, police vehicle replacements. Um, in FY24, it's every fourth year, we have a request for four vehicles. Typically the request is for a three vehicle replacement. Um, we are just at the point now where we're getting caught up with the FY21 and 22 request. And by that, I mean, the vehicles were all on hold. So we had ordered vehicles and we never received any of them. And we've just now started to take delivery of those vehicles. Um, and so that includes the animal control officer's vehicle, which was approved from last year's FY request. Um, and also for the two vehicles requested for the Crest Group. So those vehicles are not in yet, um, but the money is there to purchase those. So, you know, they're under contract, they've been purchased. We're just waiting for, for delivery on those vehicles. So for FY24, we are requesting uh, four hybrid vehicles at the um, cost of $300,000. And I don't know, Sean, if that, includes the reduction that we're going to be getting from um, Stephanie's group as well. So I don't know if that's the $20,000 reduction. So I believe uh, these numbers already include the cost of the hybrid. Um, the numbers that Doug put together already include the hybrid cost in there. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So so that is the actual cost, the $300. I, I believe so. We, I'll make that a point to confirm, but um, that was my recollection talking with them. So I think everybody knows by now that um, all of the vehicles we purchase now are, are hybrid and or either plug-in electric hybrid, including the, um, the Crest vehicles. And that's kind of where we stand. It's a pretty simple request, um, but certainly entertain any questions. Pam. Yeah. Do, um, thanks for that presentation. Um, do all of our electric vehicles come with a cost toward, or some portion of the cost uh, applied to new charging stations or do we, or are we going to see another request for, for charging stations from other budgets? Thanks. So for police vehicles, ours are all- um... Hybrid. Our, our fuel management systems, so those are not plug-in yet. Um, those are hybrid gas vehicles. The Crest vehicles are the ones that are gonna be plug-in hybrid, and that includes the cost of the uh, charging stations. And I believe, Sean, we agree there are gonna be two at Bank Center, if I'm not mistaken. We still have the one out behind the town, um, mm -hmm. town hall, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that sounds right. I, I think that'll be part of the, 
that'll be a little bit of the logistics we have to think about is the one for Cress, um, whether that's a public charging station or not, considering it's being used for a public safety vehicle, um, we may not want it to be a public charging station, um, you know, in the event that they need to charge and they can't right. get it, get onto it. So um, exactly. that, that'll be part of the planning as we go forward. Right. Jennifer. Um, I have two questions. The first one is for Scott. I, you, the thing that you said about the company that's going out of business new, in New England, but 90% of the police departments use them. I, I missed what it, what do they do and what is it that you'll need to replace? So they, it is all the equipment that we use for dispatching purposes, report writing, data collection, pretty much any information that comes into this facility um, that has anything to do with communication and or report writing or data collection is handled by this company. So it would include report writing, dispatch consoles, five dispatch console stations, and all the equipment that's associated with dispatch and policing. Well, that sounds pretty huge. It's huge. It's expensive. And um, again, we're kind of stuck in a corner here, painted in a corner because, again, this company has been used, utilized by almost every police department in the Northeast. And, you know, they gave us a five year window to replace this. It let us know that they're going out of business. Well, that's good. At least they gave us, <laughs> gave you five years. Um, my second question is maybe for Sean or Kathy, or I'm not sure. Um, Scott said about, I, I'm interested in the conversation about body cameras. Mm. And Scott seemed to say it's like not for, like he's bringing it up now, but it's not for this body to like, it's, but so I guess my question is like, what does this body, what will this body need to decide or discuss regarding body cameras at this time? Kathy, yeah, do you mind if I start? Go for it. Sure. So, so I think this committee should still discuss it like you would discuss any other project. Any questions you have, you know, what would be the operating costs? Um, uh, you know, any question, I would treat it like any other capital project. It may not get implemented as quickly as other ones um, because of the, the process that Scott outlined, but I would still treat it like any other capital request because it's on the plan for now and, um, and could go forward for approval this year. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Jennifer. I would just add that, you know, the um, it, and it's not a hiccup or anything. It's just with the with the facial recognition um, bylaw that just leaves some unanswered questions. Otherwise, we would just be moving forward in a normal request year. And I just I need to have some questions answered before we can move forward uh, legitimately with this process. Mandy. Thank you. Um, my questions relate to the body cameras, but also the in-car video systems. I wasn't clear with what you were saying about actually the consoles too. Are you removing those requests from the funding request for this year, or do you still want them on the capital funding for this year? You're just warning us that they might show up on our three-year-old and later in three years because they haven't quite made it through the system. So that's my first request because it's a half a million dollar chunk that yes. we're talking about depending on where you are there. But then with the body cameras, um, if if they're pulled from this year's request because they might take two or three years, uh, normally we buy in-car in video systems replacements. I think every year is, tends to be the the system. And, and I saw this year and next year they weren't on the capital program it, if we're not, it, if by depend, no matter what the council does, if 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 the council approves the body camera purchase and all, um, and everything that goes along with that under the surveillance tech bylaw, if it's going to take three years, should we? Do you still need in car video systems before that, or can you wait? So that's that's my other question, and then, um, I think I have a lot of questions about the body cameras, but since it all relates to the what the questions that would happen under the surveillance tech policy and the council approving that prior to um, any RFP going out, because that's what the surveillance tech bylaw requires. Um, my question, I guess, is when do you intend to come to the council to make those requests? So I guess I would ask Mandy Joe, maybe we should go forward with the request for the body camera and in-car video system software 
um, because I don't know where we stand on the calendar with the surveillance software bylaw. Um, I know we're have some, having some discussion coming up in March about the in-car video system and specifically how it relates to that bylaw. If we think we're gonna be, we think that the bylaw is gonna be in place by July 1st, then we should probably move ahead with the request for the um, body camera proposal. The, the radio console, um, you know, the, the dispatch console project is not, it shouldn't move forward at this time. Paul, do you, I assume you have a really yeah, so, yeah, so the surveillance bylaws in place. What we're going through now is the first time we've asked the council to approve a particular technology, which is the uh, cruiser videos. And so that's, and that's scheduled for TSO. That's been referred to TSO and that's scheduled I know Athena's working on a time when you could be available, Scott, and that's going to be in March or April, whatever date you give it. You've given her three dates that you can attend. So that will move forward. And I think that it is um, appropriate for us to develop a, a request to the council for the uh, body cams, because I think that's something the department has asked for. And it's we need to get an under or an approval from the council before we would even begin to go into the marketplace to purchase them. We would need to know the pricing and all that, but we don't know what the council's opinion is on those surveillance things. So I think that's the process. Uh, I think it's important to keep it on, maybe not for effort. There could be union issues with this as well. So there's a, other cost implications, but we should discuss whether it stays on this capital plan or goes on a, a future year for that. John, did you want to speak to this? I, my, yeah. My, this is a follow up. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a good pilot project to see how how capital will work with the new bylaw. Um, does the does the approval under the bylaw need to happen first, or does the capital does the appropriation need to happen first? Happen first, and then the bylaw gets approved, or do they happen sort of on parallel tracks um, at the same time? Um, and is there enough time to do that? Right? If do we have enough time to do that? So. I think this will be a learning experience uh, for all of us uh, with the new bylaw and how how these projects move through the system. So I have three questions, Scott, and I don't, given what we've just said about body cam, I don't need answers now. Um, with the body cams, last year, the exiting governor put up a big chunk of money, so it was available to various towns. Do we have any idea whether there will that funding will again be available? Um, and it was specifically for body cam. So just when this all comes up on on money sources, um, and you know, since the governor's budget is March first, I mean, none of us might know the answer for that for a while. Secondly, um, you had fifty down. Um, do we need fifty? So could there be a, a smaller number since fifty people aren't on duty all at the same time? Um, just on terms of systems. Then my last, uh, my other, my other two projects on the console. Um, I understand that this is on a delay. Would 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 is one of the criteria we're using on whatever our replacement is for the company that won't be in business anymore to be able to link it some way to the old system. So if we want to look at trends over time on dispatch calls, we can. I realize we've got a more might have a more primitive one than the new ones, mm -hmm. and would are we looking to make sure crests crests related are in the, incorporated? And I'm assuming the answer is yes. My final question, I'll just rattle them off, is on the hybrids. Um, in your experience with them so far, do do they last longer than three years, and are maintenance costs a lot lower? Um, I know the way we drive ours has got nothing nothing like the way the police need to drive theirs, but um, there are a bunch of them that are well up in the 200,000 miles, and but also just the maintenance, the repair costs are really low compared to um, all the systems. So do, are we saving a little bit on um, breakdowns, on repairs, on, on things that go wrong with other cars? Um, so on the experience, is it really a three, is it a three year duration and can we assess that? Gotcha. Um, that's my three questions. Sure, so I'll start with the body grant program uh, question. So absolutely that the purchase and the maintenance, there are two different grants that are available through the state EOPS and purchasing is, is one of them. 
So I checked with East Hampton and Hadley and Chickabee, I think it was. The average grant for purchasing of the body cameras is between 40 and 50%. So the purchasing price for the, for the camera system itself uh, has been on average through the, the, the grant received between 40 and 50% of the cost. The maintenance cost uh, East Hampton received was for 25% of the maintenance cost and Hadley's was 30%. So whatever that percentage ends up being, uh, both for the cost and for the maintenance down the road, there will be some a significant reduction on what we come to before or reimbursement, I guess, to the town once the purchase is made. Thank you. Yep. For the um, the question about the radio system and in inclusiveness with Cress, yeah, that was put into the proposal for our quote when we asked for it through our supplier, which is Goose Town Radio and Communication System. So uh, Cress was included and, and what may be necessary to, to for their information, data collection and their report writing down the road. And do we need all 50 of the cameras? There are times when all of our police officers are working at once. It doesn't happen as frequently as it used to. Um, we could probably get away with a smaller number um, but it probably wouldn't be that much smaller. I'm thinking we could probably get away with 40. Um, but we would need to logistically make that work at, at times when the entire force is ordered in to work. For instance, for Blarney blowout, everybody has to work at the same time there. So instances are, there are times when everybody's working. Um, Gabe, I'm going to defer to you on the high on on Kathy's question about the maintenance costs and the hybrid vehicles because you handle all the billing with our supplier on that have you seen a significant reduction so far with the hybrid ones we have unfortunately we we haven't there's been some issues with uh, some of the hybrids especially the the newer models uh, for example we have one particular hybrid that's that's been uh, in the shop for over six months now and one of the main ma major issues is parts. Um, they're having a, a real hard time in getting parts and fixing these vehicles. Um, one of our newest cruisers uh, had 1,500 miles on it, and there's a hose um, that's that the way that it's placed is too close to the pulley, so the hose end up ended up being pierced which leaked all the coolant out and this is a brand new cruiser and that's been in, in the shop for three weeks now and we're still waiting for the part and this is uh across the board nationally with uh with these hybrids so right now i think um right now there's some issues when it comes to maintenance and a lot of it is is getting the parts and a lot of it is there i think they're going through a lot of trial and error with these new models so I think that will improve um, once they get their act together. But right now, there's certainly some issues. Thank you. Welcome. Alex. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so um, Kathy had asked the question that I had about the, the grants for the police body camera. So I'm, uh, am I assuming correctly that the amount, the 250,000, doesn't include the expected grants? And if so, I guess, again, it comes back to that question, sort of as there are more of these grants available and money's coming back, where is that money going? And is it a funding source that goes back into JCPC or to what? I feel like we have all these, there are lots of really wonderful grants and programs out there, um, but it feels like we're front end loading a lot of this stuff and then money is coming back at a later time. And so, you know, what sort of process should we have around that in terms of how it comes back and what we do with those funds? That's more for Sean and, and Paul, not, not so much for Scott. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know where the grant uh, referrals come back to, but Sean, that's probably on your radar. So just to clarify, Alex, we're talking about the grant that would help pay for the cost of the new system. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking 50, 40 to 50% of the purchase price and 25 to 30% 
um, maintenance and right. they're going to put that under their operating budget. But I mean, the per, I mean, 40 to 50% of 250,000. Yeah. So, so if we know about the grant before the project is um, approved, we would just reduce the reduce the upper cost. If it's after, then we'll have to make sure there's no supplanting issues with the grant. But assuming there's no supplanting issues with the grant, we would um, not spend the, the we would close out the article and have it fall back into the sort of the closed article fund for JCPC, which then can be appropriated for other capital projects in the future. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just really interesting that, again, coming back to sort of the timing of budgeting and JCPC, and, you know, it's, it's fabulous that all of these funding sources are available, but I feel like JCPC is increasingly in a sort of awkward position of putting out money that then I don't know that we ever really see it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like there's just the way that the money is flowing. I don't know how frequently we know that 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 money is gonna that before we have to make these spending decisions. Right. We don't typically decisions. get grants for things after they're approved by uh, after there's an appropriation. That I would say um, if we feel strongly that we're we're gonna uh, have the potential to get a grant for this uh, expenditure, we should potentially reduce the ask before it's approved and then see if we get the grant. And if we don't get the grant, come back um, for the balance. But once we appropriate funds, it's, it's rare that we get a grant then at that point. Yeah, I just feel like, again, you were sort of making these decisions these days. I mean, I, I feel if we take the police dispatch console off, um, you know, if voila, we're balanced this yeah. year, that's lovely, but. Um, it would be I, a pretty easy question for me to find out, Alex. Okay. Um, you know, I'm I'm on one of the committees for the EOPS grant process, so um, it would be a simple question to find out whether or not that funding comes for comes first. Um, okay. And certainly, I can check with the other police chiefs who have already used the grants. And and maybe that's like a second. Like I feel like we we adjusted this process to sort of include the question about the grant, and I think that was a really good thing that we added, but. It feels like there needs to be one more step because yeah. we have this tight window where we make all these decisions and we know about all these potential grants. But by the time, by the time things really play out, we've already sort of had to prioritize things where maybe we wouldn't have needed to. So I guess just if there's a way to sort of shore up that process, sure. I think. It yeah, it's my bad if I didn't put it in the notes for the actual preparation of the capital request. I should have. You 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 noted the grants were available, but okay. Not that so gotcha. that, hence yeah. <laughs> Right, and I think your question, Alex, is true of the the town hall boilers as well. I think the same issue applies there with the green communities grant, except that one we went the other way with it, where it's the lower amount and we might have to increase it. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll look at that and um, and have something to update you on in a couple meetings when we look go come back to the full plan. Thank you. You know, I noticed um, on Irv had asked the electric school bus. Grant, and you said if we don't go forward, the grant would just be given back. So getting the grant in anticipation also allows us to do what you want, Alex. You know, what we all want. We'd like to see the net cost rather than, than the... I'm guessing that's usually the exception, though, and not the norm. Right. <laughs> I think that I'm not seeing any other hands on this set, Sean, so... Okay. Then uh, thank you, Scott and Gabe, for uh, coming and talking uh, with the committee about the projects today. And um, if there's any other follow-up questions, I'll reach back out to you guys. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you. Thank you, everyone. Right. And then, Doug, do, are you in a rush? I, I think Sean is going to go first, but if you're in a rush, Doug, um, you're okay? Okay. I mean, both of these should be kind of quick. Um, Doug, are you speaking on behalf of the school IT? I am, unless Jerry pops in, but he's away today, so I doubt okay. he's going to join us. Well, he is actually, he may be in the audience. So Jerry will be there um, probably in 10 minutes. Um, so Sean, do you want to go through the, the town IT requests? Yeah, um, good afternoon. I think this is one of the uh, quickest, easiest, and uh, probably most boring capital <laughs> requests that IT has made uh, since I've been here, but um, it's pretty straightforward. We um, we're asking on the town side for 200,000 for, we put it under infrastructure replacement. It's what we typically ask for, for um, network switches, PCs, um, routers, basically the, all the kind of day-to-day -day stuff that we uh, replace over the course of a year. We 
we were lucky in being able to use CARES money and some ARPA money for some of these projects um, early on in the pandemic and now being about three years past CARES money looking into next fiscal year. Um, we're at the point where we need to start replacing some more PCs, switches, routers, et cetera. So that's, um, that's that chunk of money. And then the other is a similar um, ask for specific to the library for 29,200, um, mostly for PCs and wireless access points. Um, that's in coordination with the library with the intention of um, planning that in, in whether that's going to go into their existing building, a temporary location, and or um, a renovation. So um, that's all, all I really have to say about it. And I'll just add that the FY23 requests, uh, for the reasons that Sean already described, was reduced quite a bit from sort of our typical um, IT request, which is usually in the hundred dollars to $200,000 $200, range. It was reduced down to 75000 for FY23. Alex. Um, yeah, just a quick question. So. Um, in prior year, or, well, last year, we seem we seem to have uh, last year we, we knew FY twenty four was going to be a two hundred thousand ask, but then the out years were one hundred and twenty five thousand. But then this year we've bumped FY twenty five to two hundred thousand, but the remaining out years are hundred. Like, should all the remaining out years be two hundred thousand or? <laughs> That's very that, possible. That we we can go through. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's probably worth us going through again and looking at our replacement cycle. We've, we've adjusted it over the years, depending on, um, you know, whether we're replacing some switches one year, whether we're replacing servers some year, there's some, some more expensive stuff um, that we do only replace every five years. Um, so it's worth, I, I guess I couldn't answer your question right now, but we, we certainly can look at that and then see it. It's about catching that up to where it should be to be a, to get a more accurate prediction. Pam, I saw your hand go up and go down. Is it just? Um, I had I had the same question, Sean, and I don't need an answer on it. Um, I had a, I have a more general question, and um, it would be Sean and Paul to speak to it. But we have a last round of or we have money in ARPA and to the extent we're trying to support town services, would any of these things such as the this kind of equipment um, be potentially on the list? And if if we get to a balanced budget for this year, this coming year, the FY25 budget looks really bad. You know, so I'm just looking at um, what's essential and wh where can we smooth things? So Sean, you seem to have a, there are some peak loads where we're buying really big things and then it drops and then we're buying big ones. So just to think through the timing of these, that that's a request. It's, it's, it's different than outside grant money, um, but it's, a, it's similar. Yeah. Um, how we use ARPA funds is something that Paul and I have been discussing a lot lately, um, as, you know, in anticipation of, uh, coming up, uh, speaking with the council about a plan for using the remaining ARPA funds. Um, so it'll be discussed more in the next month or two, the plan for using those funds. And um, I think there is potential for it to support the capital plan or, or projects that were on the capital plan. Um, we will be able to, if, it, if it's not in place in time for the FY24 capital plan, um, there's still potential it could be in place for the FY25 capital plan because the deadline to have funds committed is uh, the end of 2024, which would be the first half of FY25. So there's still one more fiscal year where um, if it's not this year, it could be a few uh, the next fiscal year. Okay, thank you. All right, any final questions for Sean? All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Jerry and Doug hope they're so lucky. All right. Um, <laughs> so, so Jerry, do you want to speak to the, uh, I think there are two separate requests the school submitted. Sure, on, on the IT side, it was uh, pretty straightforward this year. Um, I pared things down kind of with an eye towards 
you know, being positive that, you know, the override will pass and, and in a three years, roughly time or so, we'll have a new elementary school. And that during that building process, a lot of the infrastructure pieces will be replaced. So what I put in for for, for um, this year or is pretty much for two things. It's projector replacements and infrastructure and wireless upgrades for Crocker Farm Elementary. That school is not going to be touched you know, by the, uh, the new school. Um, so they sh their wireless is getting a little old. It's just completely functional now. But we're seeing devices coming in that are supporting the new Wi-Fi standards, Wi-Fi 6, which is higher speeds, greater capacity. Um, we've gotten some new Chromebooks this year that will support that. We're just in the process, of, towards the end of the process, of rolling out replacement laptops for the, uh, the teachers and admins at the elementary level that are newer laptops that support the higher speed wireless. So we're looking to do that. Hopefully, you know, Crocker was renovated about 21 years ago right now. Um, I'm, the wiring is kind of on the bubble there about how much speed it will actually support right now. Unlike all the other schools that were wired circa 97, um, the wiring can't support the higher speed. So we're not going to make significant changes to those buildings without investing in new wiring infrastructure, which is time consuming and costly. Um, so we've been seeing a lot of attrition with projectors this year, replacing those as we can. Of course, timing is difficult because the new projectors have a different mounting system, which requires us to use hammer drills to mount them to the walls. You can't do that during the school day, it's somewhat disruptive. So we can only do it either before or after school. So the projectors we bought last year, we've been shipping away at, we used more than half of them already this year. Um, we're still seeing supply chain issues, significant as far as the networking hardware goes. Um, we're talking not months, but years for some equipment. Some of the network switches are talking a year to three years out. So it's hard to say, oh yeah, we're gonna buy it and spend it all right now. That's the goal, but you know the supply chain has other ideas. So we do what we can on that. The projectors, the last time I ordered them, I had to wait three months or more for them to arrive. So that's still a challenge, but it's easing up slightly, but not significantly. Um, Chromebooks were all set until June of 24. Um, we have a, a large number going out of support. I think I've mentioned this in the past, but for those of you who are maybe not here, Google sets a finite life for Chromebooks. So that after, used to be five years. We, now the last batch we just bought, I think we're getting until 2027 when they go out of um, update support. So they've gotten a little better, but this year we have, you know, in, in June of 24, we're gonna have to replace some, but for 23, we're, we're okay. So that's it, really. So, um, Sean, I have something that's more of a comment than a question. So I'm just sure. Um, you mentioned that um, Wildwood and Fort River aren't in this mix because we're all hoping the school becomes a reality. Uh, yeah. But you also said the current wiring in the building won't support an upgrade. Getting Sean any information about that, because we've been asked, can't we just, some people have asked, can't we just fix the buildings? What's the cost to it? And my understanding is there's all sorts of wiring, plumbing issues in the building, and our design team did some really good pictures of furnaces and walls and stuff. I'm not sure they captured wiring systems and Wi-Fi, you know, that they won't, they won't capture. So I'm just saying that just a piece, it, it would be useful. So I don't just quote you saying it in this meeting <laughs> when yeah. people ask me. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as that goes, I, I 
defer to the, the facility staff as far as the boilers and stuff go. They're old buildings and they're aging and they were built with the technology at the time. Um, as far as the wiring goes, you don't see it. It's in the ceiling and in the walls. So we, we've added some wiring over the years. Um, when we went to a, a, an IP phone system where the classrooms only had the intercom phones, a few years ago, we ran the wiring ourselves. Um, I think that summer we put in over three miles worth of, of cable. Um, so some of it's newer, but the bulk of it isn't. And when it was wired before I got there, so it was a long time ago. Um, I don't know why, but well, you knew this, the, they didn't really have real walls and the fake walls didn't always have power on them. So they ended up clustering network drops in one place. So there might be six network drops in only one location in the room, which is less than useful. That's really not where a teacher puts their desk. So, so we'd have to do some wiring there. Wildwood presents another challenge. Maybe I'm telling you something you don't know. Maybe you do. Um, some of the ceiling tiles have asbestos, as we I found out after 20 some odd years in the ceiling. So um, we can't touch them. So that would need to be done. The, the, that asbestos would need to be abated if you were going to keep using that school beyond you know the time where we were planning to replace it. Thank you. Doug. So I'll just add a couple of things to that. So <clears throat> when, uh, when we come back and talk about other things, uh, facilities related, I'll make sure that uh, Mr. Roy Clark is aware of that question around some of those those other pieces of infrastructure relative to Fort River and Wildwood. And so you can kind of be prepared to, to give you some sense of the needs that are, are in those buildings. Um, uh, they're pretty substantial. Um, just because uh, Jerry just mentioned it on the question of uh, asbestos. I mean, obviously we've, we've done remediation. We continue to do remediation. There are Circumstances that arise anytime we we have something come up, uh, you know, we often need to test. And and as you see, a lot of times in our our capital requests, our requests are regular uh, chunks of money to to handle questions and issues that arise around asbestos. It's still a material that's used in new buildings, uh, so it's not something that's going away. It's just a matter of managing it and, and limiting it and treating it carefully and cautiously. And we do that, and and so uh, it does complicate things at times because you know it was much more pervasive in use in the past um, than it is now as far as its usage it used to be in all ceiling tiles and and uh, floor adhesives and that sort of stuff they don't use it for those things anymore but we do have buildings of an age that have some of that so when we go to you know, make changes or or adjustments to those facilities that that have those things we have to chest test for asbestos and of course then remediate it if necessary um, so that's also another little um, I don't want to say bonus but uh, additional cost perhaps when we go to do uh, any kind of extensive renovations uh, in, in those older buildings. So uh, we're, we're all keeping our fingers crossed that they'll arrive fast and we'll build a new school and that'll uh, significantly limit the, those, those issues for us. Thank you. Pam. Can someone remind me generally uh, the relationship between uh, the town capital projects and school and library. Um, I think I came in with a false understanding that um, capital projects um, would be covered by the school, by the school's own budget and, and the same for the library. So I'm, I would love to be uh, updated on my thinking. Alex, do you want me to do a quick explanation or were you gonna to respond to that? Yeah, well, I, yeah, no, actually, it's a really good, it's a good question, Pam. So um, from the library's perspective, I can speak to, and somebody else can speak about the school. So there actually used to be a line item on the JCPC line items for the library specific to capital requests. So um, pre this building project, there would be a regular line item of roof needs replacement, you know, brick needs tuck pointing, and the exact same thing you see with all the other municipal buildings. In fact, it was listed under municipal buildings and they had their own line. And when the library started this project, um, the thought process of the library was we would stop submitting requests to JCPC in anticipation of a really big request around the building project. And so you really haven't seen requests from the library uh, 
for like seven years, I want to say, other than, you know, the IT equipment replacements and maybe the van. So those are purposely not, and, and I worry sometimes that people do in fact forget that that's how it used to be because no requests have been made. So for example, if town council doesn't move forward with the project, then the library would go back to, you know, putting all of those requests back within the JCPC as they've done in the past. Um, so I think that, does that answer yep. your, okay, great. <laughs> and the, the regional schools, Pam, are different than the elementary schools. So it just comes in, it comes, we don't sit with regional school projects. We just sit with elementary school projects in, Mandy may want to speak to that so, or not. <laughs> no, you can continue on what you were going to say. I actually had a separate question related. To no, that. I was just responding to the schools are two, two buckets. There's, there's middle and high school in one bucket. And then there's, you know, we, um, yes, that's it. So I guess this question is for Sean um, more than Doug and, and, and not Jerry, but um I, last week we talked about um, some of the DPW requests and other requests that actually kind of relate to school maintenance. Um, is it appropriate? Should we be asking those questions today, or will Doug and Roy come back during some of those specific requests? I'd actually like Jerry to answer that one. Um, <laughs> Jerry, if you could weigh in. Um, no, no, so I think that is a question when um, Rupert is here. I think. Um, we could all have a conversation on that one. I've, I'll have to double check to see if DPW is here the same day because it would be best if they are. But um, but I think that's the conversation with Rupert because he's responsible for grounds maintenance, which is where a lot of the overlap with DPW is. Thanks. I, I'm not seeing any other hands. Um, so... Thank you both. Um, it was very clear um, what the needs are, and you were very succinct in presenting them. So I thank you for it, and thank you for the work you do for our schools. Thank you. Thank you all. And thank you, Jerry, for coming in on vacation. Jerry's on vacation this week, but appreciate him uh, uh, helping us out today. Yeah, didn't have to shush the grandkids. They didn't have to come today, so we're good. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. So if I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing any other hands up. So um, I'm, we do have one public in the, and so I, I think we're open for public comments um, if there are any, and I'm just going to watch to see if, it doesn't look like there are any public comments. Um, so the only other thing I just wanted to note is Alex, some of you who came on at the very beginning, Alex sent in minutes as, and then the, the week before Pam sent in minutes, they're getting posted each time that as soon as Sean gets them to the extent people want to look at minutes and, and particularly if you missed the week before, um, the minutes are there and the videos of each of these meetings is go, are going up pretty quickly. Um, you, get a, you get it right after the meeting if you're doing the minutes, but the town is posting them by Friday afternoon. So then it's when you go on JCPC site, you can click on recording and you can find the um, the uh, the recording. So I have found them very useful when we come back to being talking about all this to remember. So the minute paper doesn't have to take it down every sentence that people did, but really to get a flavor of the discussion. Um, so Pam, I just you know I'm just talking about that we've got those two resources, Pam. Yeah, actually, I was looking for the for the minutes to to look at and review um, in our packet for today. And I and so your explanation of where they actually are is helpful. Would it be possible to put them in the packet from? Uh, the it's in the packet now. It, it wasn't before the meeting, but I did add it to the packet for today um, during the meeting. So um, it's in the it should be in the packet now. It might be mixed in in a alphabetical order in a way that's not helpful, but um, <laughs> it should be in there. <laughs> And just so, just so you know, I mean, I the, the there was a little bit of a delay with me looking at it, but Alex had the recording and didn't yet have the YouTube link, so I just directed the link so that if people want to read the minutes and get the link, okay. and then I said perfect. Um, Did you find it, Pam? It should, it's labeled 2023 02 16 JCPC minutes. 
Yeah, we don't for for whatever reason. JCPC. I need to close out and come back in. Yeah, and it's in the it's in the folder for today's meeting, so the twenty third. So it, to the extent we get them at least the day before, Sean will be able to put them in so that you can be seeing them at the same time, or as unless the Kathy just isn't paying attention since you've delegated a quick review by me. So I think that's it. And uh, we are we are done at 2.45. So we've made up for the 11 minutes we went over last week, if you take an average. Um, so I, I think I want to, uh, unless I hear anything else, Pam, is your hand still up or just not down? Okay, so we are adjourned at 2.45. Thank you, everyone. See you Bye, next everyone. week. Yeah.